Um, as I said on the radio afterwards, I thought well, this was a huge win for us. I think they're really a good team. There's a reason they're, they're first place in the league. Um, I'm very pleased with the way we played and how we handled the game. I'll talk about that more later. But we finally got the marquee win that, that can give us the confidence to, to you know, push forward and into the, into the most important part of the season, February and March. So I think that, you know, we've been shaking our heads a lot about the way, you know, things have gone for us. A lot of right there and we can't finish and things like that. So to get the win and win it the way we did, I think, is really, really important for uh, Team 46. So I'll let you ask the players questions. Uh, for both players, can you talk about that uh, defensive effort in the second half, all the backcourt pressure, and how that uh, put you guys back ahead? Yeah, um, you know we're we're an athletic team, we're a long team, so you know we found um, you know five points in the game where we can where we can do that, where we can full court pressure, and you know that lets Duke really you know that's that's his game, going for steals and and getting out there and pressuring them and stuff like that. So with this team, you know we can really uh, utilize that and, and do more of that. Yeah, and also uh, in practice we've been. We've been doing some little defense arrangements, and we just stuck to our defensive game plan tonight, and it really helped out during the strip, during at the end of the game. New rule with Oakland Radio Duke. Talk about your new role. You're coming off the bench now, and you and I have talked before, and you've told me whatever it takes to win. That's really the mentality that you've had when you come off the bench. Here. Yeah, uh, coming off the bench is no problem with me. Like I, like I was telling some, telling uh, student radio earlier, I look at guys like Jamal Crawford, Jason Terry, Mono Ginobili, who are great guys, great. Six man, so I, I just whatever my role is to help this team win, I'm a, I'm gonna do it, and we two and zero, oh, yeah, we two and zero oh doing this role, so I have no problem. Travis, coming off a of record-setting uh, personal effort the other day, um, did you have to guard any more against the letdown at all? Um, how how did you approach this game personally? Uh, I approached it the same, you know. Uh, I had the same routine coming into today, uh, you know, me and Drew. Valentine stuck around, or Duke too, sorry, sorry dude. Uh, you know, us three were shooting after a shoot around today, um, doing our same routine, same thing. It's, you know, I don't, I don't let that stuff get to my head. It's just, uh, you know, you have a good night and you get back at it the next day. So, I mean, I approach it the same way. Alan Jordan, the Oakland Post Duke. Coach pulled you towards the beginning of the second half to calm you down a bit and you responded well. Talk about the frustration. Uh, me and Coach got a little tough love because he wants the best for me, so he always gonna be hard on me. Yeah, I, I have no problem with it, cause sometimes players always think they know everything. But hey, it worked out. So. Where for the for both players, where does this victory rank as far as the ones that you've had this season? Uh, this is right up there. Um, I mean. This might be the best victory, victory, just because, you know, we have, you know, been going through some things and trying to figure different things out defensively and even offensively stuff like that. But tonight just showed that, you know, we're we're getting better. Um, you know, we're we're not panicking when things go wrong. Uh, you know, in the past, you know, four or five minutes before the before the half, uh, you know, we might have one turnover and it leads to three turnovers and then it leads to a tie game or we're down a half. And you know tonight, whenever something went wrong, um, you know we put we just pushed through it. Uh, you know there's one point where Duke got a steal, missed a dunk, and most players are going to get down just because they missed a dunk, and you know it's going to affect them. But Duke played harder defense the next possession, got another steal. So I mean, you know that just shows that we're improving and we're making those strides. Yeah, I agree with him. Uh, I would say I would say that's the best win of the season so far. It was best. They had the best standing record in our conference, and uh, we showed a lot of people that we still can compete for the Summer League Championship, and that's the main goal, so it was a huge win for us. Thanks. What do you think the biggest difference was between the first meeting, a 10-point Western Illinois victory, and today? I would say it was just the mind. We, we was a very uh, young team still. We were still making the silly mistakes, letting, letting things turn into a snowball, into an avalanche, and we was just, I don't know, <laughs> we just, we improve. You can see the improvement tonight. And the biggest difference is they shot 21 threes tonight. You know, we didn't give them layups and dunks. Mm -hmm. uh, they had 45 shots tonight, 21 of them were threes. So we, we defended the basket. Uh, I thought we did a great job of doubling parts early. And we let them know if they were going to score, they were going to have to make jump shots. And I thought that was the biggest difference. Any more questions for the players?
about the pressure hitting the free throws that you guys hit. You know, down the stretch, you guys really buckled down on defense. You guys went to the stripe, and Travis, he hit 13 free throws. Talk about the pressure against Western Illinois to hit the free throws. Uh, yeah, that's just it. Just shows how we're improving. Um, you know, our mental toughness is. Uh, you know, we're getting stronger in every uh, asset of the game. Um, you know, at Pittsburgh, I missed a really important free throw. And that was early in the season, and you know, now I, I want to shoot the free throws. I want to be at the line at the end of the game, and I want to have the ball in my hand. So, you know, it just shows we're improving and, and we're making those strides. All right, thanks, guys. Thank we'll open thank it up to questions for Coach Campy. Uh, just right off the bat, you've had some pretty big wins here at Oakland, but where, does, where do you think this one ranks? Do you think maybe it's too early to tell? I mean, obviously, you could say, point to it as a big conference victory, too. You, you can't put this in with those types of things. For t this team, Team 46, this is a huge win for this team this year. I mean, but you can't. You can't put this in. This is a league against a team that's never won the league championship. They've got a really good team this year, and they're really good, and it's a great win for this team this year, but you can't even go down that path. I wouldn't want to. Coach, with what happened out in the Dakotas today, three teams now in the league with two losses. You guys still lurking with four. No, we're not even going to think about that. I told you when South Dakota beat us here, that I thought when we came back from that trip with what we had in front of us that we would still win the league if we won out. And uh, you know, the, those, those teams aren't going to get to four losses. We're not even thinking about it. We're worried about Omaha and I. So we got to do it one game at a time. That's cliche-ish, but it's true with this team. This team doesn't have the mental capability to look forward like that. We have to now, we're going to take a couple days off and rest, and then we're going to get ready for Omaha as if it's the Super Bowl. You know, it's, it's a very, very important game. And, and then uh, we'll see what happens after that. Coach, is Duke Monday now your sixth man? For right now, yes. I, I think that, um, you know, we, we made that change. We did some things. I think Duke, tonight he played, how many minutes did he play? He played 34 minutes. That's probably too many. I, he, the other night he played 26 or 8, and he had unbelievable numbers. Tonight his numbers were... 18, 5, 4 assists, 4 steals, 2 TO turnovers. So he's got great, great numbers again. And, uh, you know, if, if, you know, like I said the other night, I don't know if people remember this, but Travis Bader was struggling with his jump shot last year, and we did this with him. And I would say the last 10 to 11 regular season games last year, he came off the bench. Now I started him in the tournament. Uh, but, you know, it, it's, it's, we'll see. We'll see if, uh, how long I stay with this, I don't know. As of right now, you're not going to change it. If you win two games in a row, you're surely not going to change it. But I mean, he got 34 minutes, so I don't think he's got anything to complain about. He's got some good numbers. He played pretty good. He had a little stretch in the second half, as you said, where he got a little bit careless and threw a couple bad passes and started going for steals and jumping passing lanes, which was giving them. You know, the great thing about this game, this win for us, is they played really well. It wasn't we won because we were emotionally high, homecoming, and they you know, shot 10% or something like that. They played as well, I think, as they're going to play as far as shooting the basketball. Uh, I, 9 of 21 for the, from the three for them is a huge number. I bet you they don't have 21 threes in a Division One game all year. And uh, I thought we defended them very well. The number 24 for them had not made a three all year. Hadn't made a three all year, and he made two for two tonight. So they played good, and we took their best shots. And as Bader said, when things went wrong tonight, we took them in the chest, didn't worry about it, and we went about our business. Where in past games, when things go wrong, they snowballed. And that was the good thing about tonight. We turned the ball over late in the game a couple times we went against their press. And we didn't panic, and you know we defended, and we thought we were going to win, and it was not that big of a deal. So you know, I'm really pleased with the win. Coach, you talked about how they stepped up towards the end of the game. What, talk about the growth from the team from game one to now being able to hunker down, especially against the number one team in the, mm -hmm. in the conference. Well, I think it was, again, it's the type of game that shows improvement and shows that you're a good team because think of how we won. Um, it was nip and tuck all the way through. It wasn't, you know, we bust, busted out to a 20-point lead and held on and, you know, it wasn't, we shot 38%. That's not very good. 
you know, now I credit their defense that we can't get anything close to the basket. That kid's a, a monster in there. And, and 33, Link is a really good defender, and, and they really protect the basket well. Um, and they guarded Bader hard, and, you know, so it, um, it, it just how we won the game is methodical, and we won like a good team would win, not like a lucky team won a game. And a lot of times in college basketball, you know, home court and momentum and the best team doesn't always win. And, and I'm not going to say the best team won tonight, but we played like a very good team tonight, not like a lucky team. So I, I'm very pleased with it. Coach, uh, talking in the, the post-game interview, we, we brought up the 500 win thing. And you said that you were proud that they all came at Oakland. Just talk a little bit more about that. You're the 21st active coach now with 500 wins. There's not a lot of you out there. Yeah, I mean, I'm very fortunate. Um, if you think back through the years, um, so I'll start with players first. I mean, you can go back. I saw some guys tonight for homecoming that were here, you know, back in the 80s and 90s. And um, we've had some great, great players come through here. I mean, just we've had NBA players. We've had professionals overseas. We've had four-point students. We've had uh, Mike Tome was the student, won the Wilson Award here, which is given is the highest award given to any student, you know, not an athlete, to any student on campus. So we've had a microcosm of everything come through, um, great kids, and that, that's been rewarding for me. Uh, I've had great coaching staffs, a lot of coaches that have gone on. Um, you know, Brian Gregory played here, and he's coaching at Georgia Tech now. You know, we've had uh, assistant coaches. Dwayne Stevens was my assistant coach. He's one of Izzo's top assistants. I mean, we've, We've had coaches come through here that have contributed to all the winning. And then, as I said, that having won all of them here at Oakland is, you know, that's a unique thing and something I'm very proud of that, you know, been able to survive. <laughs> that's part of it. Uh, surviving and, you know, a lot of different presidents, a lot of different ADs, you know. Of, I mean, going from Division Two to Division One, just surviving that was, was probably the hardest thing out of all of it. And building, built this building and, I mean, there's been a lot of great memories, and, and there aren't a lot of people that can step back and say, yeah, you know, got them all at the same place. So, it, it, it's, I mean, I hope we're going to get 100 or 200 more, too, so it's not something I want to really talk about a lot, because it's far from over, I hope. Um, earlier this season, I think you were talking about, you kind of reflecting early on in your career about how coaches would go to a mid-major and then move on to another league. To a, like a more of a destination position, has this become you know? How do you feel about Oakland has become your destination? It seems you've grown with the program. Yeah, I've made conscious decisions to stay. You know, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say I wouldn't leave. I mean, if Joe Dumars called me tonight and said he was going to offer me you know twenty five million dollars. I'd probably take it. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm not to stupid coach either. To coach somebody, I don't know. You know, <laughs> um, not stupid. But, well, maybe I am, I don't know. But I, I've made a conscious decision to stay. Uh, you know, if, I mean, you know I've turned down jobs that paid double of what I get paid here. Um, and I brought my family up in this community. Um, you know, it's, it's been a special place, and I feel very fortunate that I've been able to stay. You know, I mean, I, I think I feel more fortunate that I've been able to stay than probably people around here feel that that I did stay, you know, I mean, to be honest, uh, um, but, you know, been able to survive and move forward and never really been one to want something better. I've always been one to, to try and make this, you know, I mean, we've tried to make this UCLA, so we're still trying to make it UCLA. And as long as I'm here, that's what, that's what the goal will be. And people can laugh at that, make fun of us for saying that, but it's true. We, we want to be UCLA or North Carolina, and that, that's what we're striving for. So. Um, you know, that, that's why I've stayed and been fortunate, like I said, I've been fortunate that they've let me and, you know, there's, I, there was a roast four or five years ago and I, I made this statement and I can't, I can't remember the name of the singer now, a uh, female singer, but she's got a line in a song that it's not getting what you want, it's wanting what you've got. Uh, maybe Cheryl, you guys know the song. Cheryl Crow. Cheryl Crow, right. Yeah. But, but that's kind of how I was all, I've always felt here, you know, it's kind of want what I got, I kind of like it. So, um, I mean, it's, it's, there's flaws in every place in the world, and I'm, we surely have ours, and I surely have mine. But uh, it's, it's a pretty nice place to be.
Uh, back to the game in hand here. Um, Western Illinois has a very uh, well-respected defense, but it was your team's defense actually that uh, came out on top tonight. Can you just talk about putting your, you know, your best defensive effort forward? Yeah. Again, we gave up 51 percent. So you, you know, there are stat people out there that will say that's bad defense. But I thought we were really good on defense. I thought they, I thought every basket they got, they either had to make a nice play to get or they made tough shots. They got some open shots, but they had to make a play to get that open shot. And when you double parks, you're going to leave somebody open. Um, and their kids stepped up. Link is not a great jump shooter. He was four or six. I think he made three in a row from the baseline. And uh, uh, Robert Bennett is surely not a great shooter. And he made everything. He banked one in. So again, you know, we defended and we told them they've got to make tough shots. And if we don't give them laughs, and don't put them at the free throw line. Now we did put Parks at the free throw line on purpose a few times, but um, we kept them off the free throw line for, mo for much of the game. So I appreciate that. You guys uh, drastically reduced the turnovers tonight just with nine. What do you think was the biggest factor in that? Them, Especially playing them. Them, they don't play a, a high pressure defense. They, they play a packed defense and you know they, they guard from the basket out and they pressure the beta, you know, they, they really, really went out after Bader, and then and there are shot blockers. They've got a couple shot blockers too. So, um, you know, they they're not a high pressure team that's going to create turnovers. They're a team that's going to protect the basket and try and make you shoot poorly. You can do that when you have shot blockers. Moving forward, coach, how big will your perimeter defense and rebounding be down the stretch to the season? Yeah, I am absolutely amazed at how good of a rebounding team we've become. I mean, Western Illinois, look at, look at the athletes they have, look at the size they had, they had three offensive rebounds. I mean, I am I'm utterly amazed at how good of a team. Now, one of the reasons we're not, you know, rebound differential isn't as great as it looks is because we miss so many shots, we give the other team lots of defensive rebounding opportunities. What you have to, if you really understand the game and the stats and want to know, you have to look at the percentage of rebounds. So I don't look at, oh, we out-rebounded them 32 to 30. I look at, okay, how many shots did they miss and how many rebounds did they get and what percentage. Anytime you can hold a team to under 20% of, if there's 100 defensive rebounds and they get 20 or less, you've really done a great job rebounding. Anytime it's between 20 and 25, it's average. And then if they get 25 from the offensive standpoint, we want to rebound at least 25% of our misses, which, you know, we have, uh, not sure if we did. I haven't looked at it tonight or not, but I thought we rebounded pretty well. So I'm really pleased with our rebounding, and it, I think this team, because we are a bit challenged offensively, uh, is going to only survive if we defend and rebound. And that's unusual at all. We, we're usually not offensively challenged. We are this year just because of our youth. You're one for repetition. Um, you even got that legendary phrase. But uh, does that mean you're going to keep wearing those shoes then? No. You know, these shoes, uh, I got I got talked into these shoes, and I'm sitting there. They're talking to me about win number 500, and they have the camera on my feet. Now I know I'm not the best looking guy in the world, but uh, really, so I you know they these things they will go with the 500 ball. So they'll sit somewhere with the 500 win win ball. All right, thanks, coach. Thank you.